minions were fed up of looking the same. Oh. Apart from some having one eye and some having two, they looked the same. Hmm. And wore the same clothes. Ah. They looked at the trains. Hmm. They were all different colours and all different shapes. Now the Minion's new best friend, Tom Moss the Prank Engine, had an idea. <laughs> he reversed into the tunnel and started making some adjustments. The Minions followed. They then hid behind the bushes at each end of the tunnel. <laughs> Tom Moss had decided that if he couldn't change the Minions, he'd change every train to look the same. They were all changed into Thomases. Tom Moss came to inspect the tunnel. He accidentally changed himself into Thomas and quickly reversed back through again. <laughs> On the track there was chaos. All the Thomases were chasing each other round and round and nobody knew who was who. The real Thomas then turned up. Oh no! What's happened? Why are there lots of me? Then he saw the minions. Uh oh. He went back through the tunnel and kept examining it. Tom Moss then came around the corner and saw the real Thomas. Tom Moss made a run for it. The Minions made a run for it. The real Thomas realised what had happened and led the other Thomases back into the tunnel. And one by one they changed back to their correct size and colour. Thomas was pleased with his work. Tom Moss enjoyed the prank. <laughs> and the minions decided that all looking the same wasn't so bad after all. Okay. <laughs> it was a very special day for Gordon and Spencer. They were both due to pull some very important coaches. They stopped for a quick chat. Are you as excited as I am? asked Gordon. Oh 
Oh, I think I'm more excited, replied Spencer. We've got to make sure that we stay clean today, said Gordon. Well, it's almost time to pull the coaches. I think we'll be fine, replied Spencer. How he regretted saying that. <laughs> oh no, it's Tom Moss. And he's pulling what looks to be an engine. <laughs> but it wasn't an engine. He reversed up to Spencer and sprayed him with mud. Oh, that's disgusting, he cried. Tom did the same thing to Gordon. <laughs> oh no, we can't pull the coaches looking like this, he cried. <laughs> Quick, get Tom, cried Spencer. So Gordon chased. But as he got close, Tom sprayed him again. Oh. So Tom made it back to his tunnel. So Spencer and Gordon had to pull the very important coaches covered in mud. It was very embarrassing. So later that day, they told their story to James and Thomas. Oh, that's awful, cried James. Tom needs stopping, said Gordon. We need to come up with a plan, added Thomas. Hmm, I've got an idea, said Spencer, and he told the others. That evening, Thomas and James were pretending to sleep, and they'd put some paint cans right beside them. Out came Tom. <laughs> he looked for someone to prank, and saw the paint and two sleeping trains. <laughs> so he painted them. Painted Thomas green and James yellow and black, like a bee. Boo! they cried. Tom ran. He won't get very far, said James. Spencer blocked Tom's path. And so did Gordon. until he was completely trapped. Yes, we've got him, cried Thomas. But Tom hadn't given up. He barged James out of the way. Spencer, get him, yelled Thomas. So Spencer chased him. James was shoved out of the way, but before Tom could escape, Spencer derailed him. Yes, he's not going anywhere now, cried James. Sir Topham Hat arrived. Tom, you've caused nothing but trouble. I'm afraid we're going to have to take you to the scrapyard. Uh -oh. oh dear, it looks like Tom is doomed. Will he escape? Find out soon. <laughs> Hello, Tom Monster Prank Engine. What have you got attached to your engine? You found it and you're not going to tell me what it is. You're going to cause trouble again, aren't you? <laughs> Thomas was having a good day. But then he heard something. Thomas? Come and see me at Maithwaite Station straight away. That sounds exciting, thought Thomas. I must go at once. Uh oh, here's trouble. <laughs> you 
You wanted to see me, sir, said Thomas. No, I didn't want to see you here, said Sir Topham Hatt angrily. I want to see you on your branch line. But you called for me. Go. Thomas left, very annoyed. What's got into him, thought Thomas. Percy was busy moving cargo around. Then he heard a voice. Percy, you are dropping your cargo everywhere. Go back and pick it all up now. Oh no, thought Percy. Dropping cargo? That's terrible. You again? Something's going on here. <laughs> Percy turned round and started retracing his journey. He kept stopping but couldn't find any dropped cargo anywhere. Thomas met Percy and they told each other their stories. I need to find out what's going on, said Thomas. James was moving some of Farmer McColl's cattle when he heard a voice. James, some of your cattle have escaped and are running wild. Oh no, thought James. How could that have happened? I must find them all at once. It's you. That's a megaphone, isn't it? <laughs> But this time, Thomas saw everything. While James was busy searching for his cattle, Thomas thought of a plan. Tom Moss was enjoying his prank when he heard a voice. Tom Moss, your tunnel is on fire. Uh -oh. Tom was horrified and left immediately. Thomas came out from the trees with his own megaphone. Good plan, Thomas. Tom steamed back to his tunnel. No fire on this side. It must be the other. Tom realised that he had been pranked. He quickly reversed and Thomas went after him. Thomas was catching him up, but when he approached Maithwaite, Sir Topham Hatt stopped him. Thomas, why are you still here? I told you to get back to work on your branch line. But, but sir, said Thomas. No buts, Thomas. Go back to work. Tom saw Thomas in trouble and knew that he was safe again. <laughs> No, it's Tom Moss. What's he up to? Oh, he's got a helper. Oh look, a chocolate syrup truck. What's Diesel 10 doing with it? waiting for someone. Oh no! Percy! Watch out! Oh no! It's too late! Oh dear! He's covered in chocolate! <laughs> oh, yeah. 
poor Percy. <laughs> Tom has another idea. Uh oh, watch out Thomas. And your chickens. Uh oh. Dieselton has an idea now. Watch out, minions! Uh oh! Hey! 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 Tom has another idea, but it doesn't look like Diesel Ten likes this idea. He's doing it anyway. Fuel. Ooh, this looks dangerous. Fire? Oh no! He's going to set these trucks on fire! Oh! He caught fire himself! Oh no! Ah! Help! Luckily, Thomas and Percy were nearby to get help. Water cannons, said Flim. It's not working. We need something bigger. It's time to stop, chop, and rescue. Activating water cannons. The fire was out. Well done, said Bell. Mission completed. Great work, rescue team. Thank you, Heatwave, said Flynn. Yeah, thank you, said Diesel Ten. And I'm sorry, Thomas and Percy. It's okay, they replied. Tom Moss made me do it, said Diesel Ten. Tom Moss? <coughs> so Thomas chased him. But Tom reversed into his tunnel. So when Thomas arrived, he was gone. Maybe I'll get him next time, said Thomas. <laughs> uh oh, that sounds like Tom Moss. And he's up to something. Oh no, he spotted a bridge that's still under construction. It's far from finished. Looks like he has a plan. <laughs> Nearby, Thomas was hard at work. He came across the bridge and stopped. How's it going? asked Thomas to the digging rigs. Well, it's definitely not safe for a train to use yet, said Chomper. But while Thomas was distracted, Tom arrived and tampered with Thomas's brakes. But he didn't realise. So Thomas said goodbye and off he went. But Tom wasn't finished yet. He changed the points to send Thomas towards the unfinished bridge. So as Thomas approached, he noticed that the points were wrong, but he couldn't stop. <laughs> Tom
Thomas tried to warn the Dean Riggs vehicles. Oh no, Thomas can't stop, cried Chomper. We've got to do something, said Philip. So they sprung into action. Thomas was approaching very quickly. But luckily, they fixed it just in time. Thank you guys, said Thomas, but he still couldn't stop, and he was heading towards Tom. Thomas started chasing Tom. And because Tom was in a hurry, he went the wrong way. He started heading towards the bridge. And then... Tom got stuck on the bridge. Yes, we've caught Tom Moss again, cried Philip. But Thomas still couldn't stop, and he was also heading towards the bridge. And unfortunately... accidentally freed Tom and got stuck himself. So Tom ran away. Back into his tunnel. And Thomas was stuck. Sorry guys, apologised Thomas. Oh, it wasn't your fault Thomas, said Chomper. We're just glad that you're okay. Let's get you off that bridge, said Philip. So Chomper helped him down. Thanks guys, said Thomas. No problem, they replied. It didn't take them long to finish the bridge. But Tom had escaped once again. <laughs> Previously, Tom, you've been nothing but trouble. I'm afraid we're going to have to take you to the scrapyard. Iron Man arrived. Lots of bad guys and supervillains will try to rescue Tom. Gordon, go as quickly as you can. Stop! Give me Tom! Never! Penguin uncoupled the trucks. Tom started moving, but nothing was touching him. Oh no, anyone but that, cried Percy. Now. It's him, cried Percy. He's moving Tom. What are we going to do? asked Gordon. Even Tom was scared. It's. it's. Darth Vader! Tom. Together we can rule Sodor, he said. Tom liked the sound of that. Vader used the force to lift Tom. And put him back on the track. Gordon and Percy were scared, so they ran back to tell the others. Thomas, Spencer and James had washed, and were wondering if Gordon had made it to the scrapyard. Guys, guys, we have a problem, he panted. What is it, Gordon? asked Thomas. Darth Vader helped Tom escape, cried Percy. Darth Vader, cried Spencer and James. We need help, said Sir Topham Hat, so they called the superheroes, but they didn't know how to deal with Darth Vader. 
He's far too powerful, said Batman. Who can help us deal with him? asked Iron Man. Thomas had an idea. Nearby, Tom and Vader were making their presence felt. <laughs> what? Whoa! Ah! Hide! Hide! Over here, cried Thomas. Tom noticed him and wanted revenge, so he sped towards him, but didn't think it through. The signal hit Darth Vader off. Thomas ran, with Tom just behind. Train. complained Vader. A Star Wars rebel fighter approached him. You, cried Vader. Out stepped Luke Skywalker. Thomas told me you were here. Leave these poor trains alone, he said. But Vader resisted, so they dueled. Vader went in for a strong lunge, but Luke evaded it. Huh? Gordon approached them. And knocked Vader over. He was defeated. Well done, Gordon, said Luke. Oh, thank Thomas. He came up with the plan, Gordon replied. So Luke dealt with Vader. And as for Tom, well, it took Thomas a while to realise that Tom had stopped chasing him. Where did he go? wondered Thomas. Turns out that Tom had no interest in chasing Thomas. He just wanted to be nice and safe back in his own tunnel. <laughs> So everyone regrouped. Well done everyone, says Sir Topham Hat. You all showed great bravery today. Tom did get away though, said James. But he's just glad he's not heading to the scrapyard, said Gordon. He won't bother us for a while. So Tom was back in his tunnel, thinking up of his next prank. Uh oh. It's Tom Moss, and he's looking to have some fun. Look what he's found, a fireworks truck. This could be trouble. He pushed it around and dropped a couple of fireworks, so that the hard-working trains, like Thomas and Percy, would run over them. Hmm, what's that sound? wondered Thomas. The truck was on the firework. Suddenly, his truck exploded. Oh, it was Tom Moss. Ugh, there's jam everywhere, he sulked. But it wasn't just his truck that had exploded. Oh no! My cheese! cried Percy. Oh, Tom! Thomas arrived. Look what Tom did to my truck! complained Thomas. He did that to my truck too! cried Percy. We need to prank him back! said Thomas. Percy agreed, so they came up with a plan. 
So later that day, Tom was wandering around looking for trains to prank. When a ghost appeared, Tom doesn't like ghosts. It was a ghost Percy. Tom expected some ghostly things to happen, but nothing did. Tom then realised that it was no ghost, it was just Percy, so he left. He didn't fall for it, the plan's working, thought Percy. Tom then ran into another ghost, Ghost Gordon. Again, nothing spooky happened, making Tom realise that Gordon wasn't actually a ghost. So he left. Hehe, <laughs> wait till he sees the next ghost, said Gordon. He then ran into Ghosty, whom Tom had never met before. Tom has a think. Percy wasn't a ghost, Gordon wasn't a ghost, so this just must be Thomas in disguise. He wasn't going to be fooled for a third time, so he charged towards the ghost, but went straight through him. This really scared Tom. Ghosty then made some strange things happen. The water tower turned on. Points started changing. And what spooked Tom the most was that the fireworks truck he'd used earlier was moving completely by itself. Tom ran away, but the fireworks truck was still chasing him. He ran back to his tunnel. Everyone gathered round Ghosty. Thanks Ghosty, said Thomas. No problem, he replied. It's good to finally prank Tom back, said Percy. So everyone was happy as their prank had worked. Uh oh, only one train has that laugh. It's Tom Moss the prank engine. He's going to be a nuisance. He stopped at every weapon and tampered with each of them. <laughs> the animals soon noticed him. Hey look, it's Thomas, said Beshti. No, that's not Thomas, said Punga. It's Tom Moss, said Kion. Thomas warned us about him, so the animals sprung into action to get rid of him. Firing the coconut blaster, said Bunga, but it exploded mid-air and sent confetti everywhere. <laughs> that wasn't a coconut, said Bunga. He's tampered with my coconut blaster. Don't worry, said Ono, I'll trap him in my net. And he fired it. But when it reached Tom, it was just in pieces. Tom had cut the net up earlier. He broke my net, cried Ono. <laughs> I'll get him with my catapult, said Beshti. But Tom had replaced the boulder with a large bouncy ball. We need help, said Kion. Tom Moss was causing all kinds of problems. Meanwhile, not so far away, Peppa Pig and Rebecca Rabbit were about to go on a trip. Are you ready for a fun couple of days? asked Rebecca. Yeah, replied Peppa, and they put their luggage in the back of the plane and boarded.
Wow, we're really high up, said Pepper. They were soon over the savannah. Hey look, there's Thomas, said Mr Rabbit. That's not Thomas, said Pepper. That's Tom Moss, and it looks like he's being a bit naughty again. So they decided to turn the plane around and get some help. And soon enough... Thomas chased Tom around. Get in, Thomas, cried Kion. Tom went back through the tunnel. So Thomas followed him. But when they emerged, Tom was nowhere to be seen. Oh, we lost him, cried Thomas. Kion then came through the tunnel. Thanks for sorting him out, he said. We almost got him, said Pepper. Maybe next time, said Kion. <laughs> Good morning, Tom Moss the Prank Engine. <laughs> I see you've been helping out at the zoo. It doesn't sound like you, but well done if you have. He left. Shortly afterwards, Thomas arrived with Annie and Clarabelle. It was a lovely day and Thomas had brought a lot of visitors to the zoo in his carriages. Then there was trouble. A tiger appeared by Thomas. Quick! Everyone get in Annie and Clarabelle, he shouted, and they did. Thomas looked at the tiger enclosure. There was a fence missing, and the tigers were walking out. Thomas went to warn the zookeepers, but some tigers got in his way. The tiger looked at Thomas, and Thomas looked at the tiger. Eventually, the tiger moved and Thomas continued. Then there was even more trouble. Two of the polar bears had found the seals and the penguins. A lion and a leopard were in with the zebras. An alligator had found the polar bear's enclosure. Someone had been removing the fences. There was a snake in a bird tree. There was a gorilla on one of the stations. <laughs> there was a snake on top of a building. And a chimpanzee had found a new home on top of a very high rock. Thomas left Annie and Clarabelle for a moment and helped get some spare fences for the zookeepers. After a short while, all the enclosures had been fixed and the animals were back in them. All except the chimpanzee. The zookeepers couldn't get it down from the rock.
Thomas had an idea. No, no, absolutely no, said Gordon. Thomas arrived back at the zoo with Gordon on some trucks and brought Gordon around to the chimpanzee. And clever Thomas had brought the, oh the indignity Gordon, who had bananas all over him. Clever Thomas. The chimpanzee saw the bananas and came down. First I get covered in rubbish. Then they use me as a monkey trap. Oh, the indignity, said Gordon. The chimpanzee realised that there were actually no bananas to eat and that he could get more food in his enclosure. The plan had worked. Thomas took Gordon away and returned for Annie and Clarabel. They collected all the visitors who had hidden themselves in the buildings. Everything was now back to normal and no one was hurt luckily. Looks like you got away with it Tom Moss. Although those fences by your tunnel are a bit of a giveaway. Thomas was really in a mess. How did he get up a tree? And how was he going to get down? Well, it happened one very windy day. Thomas, said Sir Topham Hat, I'd like you to go to Misty Island and fetch some more wood to help build the new track. Thank you, sir, said Thomas, and off he went. was indeed a very windy day. The track to Misty Island was long and very windy. One section of the track went through some dense woods with trees very close to the track. Thomas stopped. I don't like this wind he said. This could be dangerous, but I must get to Misty Island, and off he went. Although he was watching the trees, he sensed that something was wrong. He stopped. Someone had put a log under the track, and he was just about to derail. He then caught a glimpse of Tom Moss the prank engine through the trees. It was you, said Thomas, who was pleased that he'd seen the trap in time. <laughs> but then there was trouble. There was a big gust of wind and one of the large trees started falling. Before Thomas could move away, the tree landed on the track. The weight of the tree catapulted Thomas on the other end of the track high into the air and he landed on top of some trees. Tom Moss, who thought his prank had gone wrong, started laughing. Thomas wasn't happy at all though. Then there was another big gust of wind, which blew Thomas out of the tree. He landed the wrong way up. Tom Moss left before he was found. Later on, Victor brought Rocky the crane. He backed up to Thomas and started work.
With Thomas on the track, Victor left with Rocky. The track was going to be repaired later, so Thomas couldn't get to Misty Island. He returned back to Tibna Sheds. I hear you tried flying today, Thomas, said Gordon. The Flying Scotsman train doesn't actually fly, you know. You were supposed to fetch some wood, Thomas, not chop it down, said James. Well, I think Thomas was clever to spot Tom Moss's prank before he fell in it, said Percy. Everyone agreed that it was really just a very unfortunate accident, which really pleased Thomas. Thanks for watching our story. If you like it, go on, give it the thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to us. Then watch some more of our stories by clicking these links. See you soon.